So today I wanted to talk about vapor barriers. What are they? How do you use them? And also, is there a way that we can test their efficacy uh, compared to not using them at all? So a vapor barrier is a very thin, impermeable layer that you wear to stop evaporative heat loss. So the theory of vapor barriers is that you actually lose a fair amount of heat through perspiration. Now there are two kinds of perspiration. There is sensible perspiration, which is sweat, and then there's insensible perspiration, which happens on the surface of your skin all the time. You just don't notice it. So with a vapor barrier, we want to prevent the heat loss from insensible perspiration. We don't want the vapor barrier to make us sweat more than we already are. And because balancing your layering system and making sure that you're not overheating is kind of complex, you usually don't want to use vapor barrier systems when the temperature is too high. Usually you only want to use a vapor barrier system when it's very cold, below freezing at minimum. So let's check out an example of a vapor barrier system I use for my feet. First layer in my vapor barrier system is just a very simple sock liner. This sock liner isn't meant to be very warm. Having a vapor barrier right next to my skin isn't always the most pleasant thing. So I just wear a sock liner to up the comfort level just a little bit. So next is the vapor barrier itself, which is that thin impermeable layer, right? And what I use is this turkey bag that I bought at the grocery store. And all you do is you take your foot and then you place it inside like this and then just wrap it around. And what I do is I usually tape the top so it all stays together like that. And that's all it takes to create that thin impermeable layer. And I bet it's already easy to imagine that your foot would be warmer with that bag on it than without. Think about when you're hiking with a a rain jacket that doesn't breathe. You get really hot really quickly and you might actually start sweating. With the vapor barrier, the best way to use it is when the temperature is very cold, when you're not gonna sweat all that much to begin with. And then on top of the vapor barrier itself, I wear the insulation layer, which is just a thick, warm wool sock. And then to finish everything up, I wore this boot. This is a La Sportiva Trango Tech GTX. This boot is actually a spring and summer boot, so it doesn't have a lot of insulative qualities itself. It is waterproof, but it doesn't have like a thick insulation built in. The only insulation really that my feet have is that wool sock. And this system seemed to work really well, but I had no way to compare it to not wearing a vapor barrier layer. So I wondered like, is there a way to test vapor barrier efficacy? Well, I did realize that I do have two feet that I use on most hikes. And I do have these thermometers with a flexible probe I could just tape to my feet themselves. And I could wear a vapor barrier on only one of those feet. So a way to test out the theory of vapor barriers is just go on a hike like that, record the data from the thermometer, export it out when I get home and see what it says. And wouldn't you know it, it was supposed to snow. So I got up really early, put on all my gear and went out for an all day hike. All said and done, it was about 18 miles, a couple of snowy peaks and 5,000 feet of elevation gain. And when I got home, this is what I found. So the average temperature that day was about 22 degrees Fahrenheit, well below freezing. So how did my feet fare? The non-vapor barriered shoe had a average temperature of around 73.5 degrees Fahrenheit, which is actually pretty comfortable given it's around 20 degrees outside. The foot with the vapor barrier applied had an average of 77.5 degrees Fahrenheit, which was four degrees higher on average than the non-vapor barriered foot. This does suggest that a vapor barrier does raise the average temperature of whatever you're applying it to. One of the results I thought was particularly interesting was the low for each of my feet. The foot with the vapor barrier applied had an average low that was 5.6 degrees higher than the non-vapor barriered foot. And ultimately the foot with the vapor barrier layer was almost always warmer than the non-vapor barriered foot. So yeah, this survey does suggest that a vapor barrier layer does in fact increase the relative temperature of your feet in something like a boot. And I was actually a little bit worried about perspiration. And as I keep repeating to myself, there is this fine balance you're trying to achieve when using a vapor barrier layer. You do not want it to be too hot. You do not want it to be too cold. If it's too hot, you sweat. If it's too cold, you failed on layering up correctly anyways. So I actually weighed the sock liners I was wearing to see if they were saturated with sweat. And the sock liner that had the vapor barrier weighed two grams more than the sock liner that didn't have a vapor barrier over it. So it was actually kind of a surprise there was only two grams differences between the sock liners. That's almost not statistically significant, so take that with a grain of salt. 
but I think it does prove that I wasn't sweating. So the question is, now that I've gone through my test, am I going to use vapor barriers in the future? And the answer is yeah. The only thing I'm going to impress upon you is that this is a really great system for very cold conditions. I think 20 degrees, 22 degrees Fahrenheit outside is pushing the upper boundaries of what you'd want to use the vapor barrier for. You really want to use a vapor barrier when things are well below freezing. And vapor barriers make more and more sense when you're on a longer and longer trip. So multi-day trips outside where it's always cold. And this is because vapor barriers stop your upper layers from getting drenched in perspiration. That's really not something that you have to worry about for a day trip. After my eight hour hike, I'm back home and I can take off my socks no matter how wet or dry they are and be pretty safe. But if I'm on a multi-day trip and I'm camping, I get up in the morning and I have a wet sock, there's a good chance that wet sock is also a frozen sock. And now I'm in big trouble if I don't have an extra pair of socks. Oftentimes you see people use vapor barrier systems for their sleeping bags. They'll actually have an impermeable like sleeping bag liner that they wear over themselves and then they put the sleeping bag over everything else. And the idea is you're trying to prevent your gown from getting saturated with that insensible perspiration. So that's vapor barriers. As I usually do, I have written an article on the Long Ranger blog that goes into more details about the test, how I performed it, and more information about vapor barriers themselves. And you'll find a link to it in the description of this video. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Until I see you again, long may you rage.